Hi there, LinkedIn family. Jonathan here from Some Talented People. And we continue our discussion with Gazelle, with Shiri, and with Gregory. And um, this this literally was happening as we had the conversation. And we're launching a LinkedIn page. And so, as we said, or as I said yesterday, if you can, so if you're Basically, women are getting this a hell of a lot. So if you can send screenshots, all the messages you've been sent in the comments below, what we're doing is we're starting a LinkedIn page called LinkedIn Me Too. And we're going to um, put this abuse front and center of a conversation in the same way as it occurred in the film industry or in the music industry because sexual violence is something which is endemic for it to be so ubiquitous is horrifying and so i urge you to please leave your comments because once we start to talk about this more and more then people will start to say oh yeah, I didn't speak up to defend that person. Oh, I let that person get away with that sexist comment. Because you have to be proactive to generate the society that we deserve to live in. All right, enjoy the show. Of the 13,000 reported incidents over those two years, 2,000 of them were the perpetrator and the victim below 10. So when you look at that, I can understand how it can be so fucked up um, from your guys experience now. Gregory, let's bring you into this. You deal in recruitment, so you're dealing with loads and loads of people. Just talk about your experience. Oh, sure. Um... I'm Gregory Austin. I've been a recruiter for 11 years, both in agency and now in the corporate setting. And I deal with people all the time. And I've, part of my mission was just to kind of help people, whether it's in the job search or just in general um, with their life and LinkedIn. And that's kind of the nature of my posts. And I've, I've you know, developed a number of people who follow and gotten to know quite a few people. And I've noticed it just from, from my end, you know, people trying to scam me. And it's usually some fake looking profile uh, some someone who looks like a model and she connects with me and it's like, hi, how are you? And it leads to Forex trading or some, you know, Bitcoin, you know, so something like that. And so anytime I see that, I just, I, I don't connect, I just ignore. But I mean, that's just a small annoyance compared to what um, I think, you know, women are dealing with on a regular basis. And that sort of led me, you know, we, you asked me to come and, and be on this panel. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Um, I thought, you know, let me, stir up the pot a little bit and uh, put a post out there about, hey, LinkedIn's not a dating site, it, you know, and, and try and get some, some feedback. And what was really interesting on some of the, the comments that I saw were that women were saying that, yes, I deal with this, I deal with it frequently or all the time. And recently there's been an uptick mm -hmm. in this bad behavior. And I'm curious on to, I don't know why that is. What's um, your speculation? I, I don't know the reason for the uptick, but I do have, I've been thinking about this for a little bit on, um, you know, why does this happen at all? Why do men persist? And um, my guess is that, and I've heard this from other men in the past that I've known who were always trying to hook up with the ladies or something, and they would just keep trying and keep trying and keep trying because somebody's going to say yes at some point. And so, and I think that's why they do it. And so it, imagine it's, it's kind of like akin to, uh, you know, a child at the store who's nagging their mom or dad to get that candy, right? And they ask, and they ask, and they nag, can I have it? Can I have it? Please, please, please. And then maybe by the seventh time, parent finally says, fine, you can have it. Go ahead. And so what that parent did was reinforce that negative nagging behavior and the persistence. Mm -hmm. And so for men, it may take 20, 30, 100 times. But if one person says yes, that reinforced all that effort to get there. Right. And, and intermittent reinforcement is the most powerful reinforcement there is. So behaviorally, I predict and think that that's what's going on there in terms of that type of behavior. So I spoke to Gazelle before we all meet, met today, and there is 
uh, a religious and cultural element to her being victimized. How mm. much, who in the panel, so Shiri's obviously had a, a religious um, upbringing, so Gazelle, so if you could agree, how much of it do you think, because I look from the outside and I see that no matter what the religion, women are dirty, unclean, lower. You know, in Christian religion, um, if you actually read the Bible, which I've only done a bit once, the women aren't even registered as higher than beasts of the field because God made Adam beasts. And Adam said, no, it's not right. I, I want someone else. So he then made a woman. So that's the belief system underpinning so much of this world. Do you agree or am I ignorant because of my lack of religion? Shiri? Yeah. Sure. Oh, should I go? Totally yeah. Agree. Yes, yes, please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Gaza. Um, so I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not familiar with that interpretation. Um, and I think that, you know, in any religion, and, and this is the problem with the Bible, like anything else, it's up for interpretation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's, you know, that's bottom line. I mean, you read a book, you take from it what you want to take from it. I read it. I will take maybe similar things or different things. And so I think that when, you know, we have that free interpretation, that's when we get into problems, right? Uh, and again, I'm, you know, I'm Jewish, but I'm not, you know, an expert in religion. I grew up, you know, with a lot of not, not a religious person, but, you know, very traditional, very traditional, uh, you know, and we studied it at school. So I'm very familiar with it, not an expert. So um, I think with religions comes interpretation and also comes, you know, what do you feel, you know, it's good for you that you want to take in or that you want to do as a religious or secular person, mm -hmm. right? Um, I have not experienced, you know, any type of uh, abusive messages like gazelle when, you know, it comes to to religion. Like for me, that has not been an issue. Right. Um, so I have not seen anything like that. So I cannot comment specifically to that. Um, gazelle, you mentioned, you know, you, you did. So I'm sure you can speak to that uh, more. One clarification is, do you think that because women are generally placed lower by these traditions, do you think that enables or encourages men like Gregor saying to go, 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 go and go? If you're coming from that point of view, right, and, uh, and maybe you are a religious person, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, at its basic, you know, uh, interpretation when you read these books, absolutely. I mean, women are not, you know, uh, treated equally, no. right, by any means in, in these books. So I think that that opens up a door for people that actually come from that angle to say, hey, why not? So, Gazelle, tell me your perspective, your religious perspective. <laughs> 